Uh, Otis is probably the most stable of healers and uh, pretty straightforward and the, the, the action plan for it. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these guys remote uh, this sort of content, the best way to do so is tipping via the, the heart below the screen or uh, just general feedback and comments of things you like, things you didn't like. I go really well with praise and or criticism. Uh, it helps me shape the future content and keep me motivated to do these guides and take the time, um, the extra time to do so. Now, with Otis, as a healer, he doesn't actually cast anything, any heal spells. What he does is he relies on this shielder effect. This says, whenever you shield, you heal the target for 30% of the amount that you shielded them. Now, shield is this really nice, you know, next turn block sort of feature. So, not only are you healing for a little bit, but you're preventing a lot of damage on the next turn. So, uh, as Otis, if Otis does have a weakness, it's going to be catching up on heals in general, like the actual health value of a target. And we'll, we'll talk about a couple ways to get around that. Uh, Otis will prevent a lot more damage than he will actually heal. And so you will find yourself that when you play with Otis, sometimes you want to take a turn, like that final turn of combat, you kind of just want to wait, shield every, like, catch everyone up on healing, or you'll rely on uh, some of the early game uh, heal at end of combat kind of items. But once you uh, you get through the healing issues, or if if you're on low enough guilt difficulty or fast enough where you have the right items, uh, and that starts to just wear away, then Otis becomes easily the, the strongest and uh, hardiest of healers. And uh, as a healer that is basically immune to silence, because all of the healing spells are defense cards, not spells. So a silent piggy is still a protected piggy. All right, so keep this in mind. Every time we apply shield, we heal, and that'll come into later some, some later effects. And we're going to go down this right side here. So this first one, Unwavering Faith. Uh, Unwavering Faith plus five shield charges lasts for one turn. So the goal is you, you press this, and then you press a lot of shield, you know, a lot of defense cards, a lot of healing buttons. I'm going to refer in this as healing cards, as any of the shielding cards for Otis from now on, because I keep catching myself about to say that, and uh, let's just, when I say a healing card, I mean a shielding card or a defense card. Uh, and note that it also says when you apply shield, apply two courage and one vitality. It's that one vitality that's really our way around uh, this whole healing problem we have. Uh, without Deccan enabled, every one point of vitality will heal the target for five and give them five bonus hit, uh, max hit points. Which base and then when the vitality disappears, they don't lose five hit points; they just lose five maximum hit points. So basically, one vitality says heal for five. Now this has been super nerfed because of uh, <clears throat> certain people pointing this fact out over and over again. That uh, so now when decadence is enabled. It'll only heal for 50%, but that's 50% rounded down. So one vitality only heals for two instead of five. That's a super nerf. We'll talk about that a little bit in the starting deck. Uh, and then later on, it's not going to make as much difference once we get enough vitality charges under our belt. But when you only have one or two vitality going on a target at a time, that's a really big hit. And we might skip some abilities until we get our gears a rolling. Next is Defense Mastery. Defense Mastery says, hey... All these healing spells we got in our hand, they now cost one less. So uh, if you weren't uh, sold on these defense cards, now that they're all one cheaper, they're going to get so much better. Uh, Double Bubble, this is one of the coolest cards for Otis. Uh, this can be played at the end of a turn and waited for the next turn, or you'll just pair it up with one of your most powerful heals for that turn. Uh, the next defense card will gain more shield and... Sorry, I think you gain the shield. But the more important part is... Put a copy in your hand that costs zero, so why pay for one when you have two for just the same amount? Um, so, double bubble, you just pair this with a super strong AoE uh, shield effect, and suddenly you have it twice. And we'll talk about the very specifics of what you use it with, but it's a powerhouse of a card. you got to make sure your hand is filtered really well so that you get this and the other card at the same turn, or at least in a play pattern that you can use them together. And then last but not least, for the final few fights, you have Dome of Light. Whenever you play a defense, shield everyone, which then triggers a heal on everyone. So this, we'll talk about, is really good for the Archon fight in triggering anything that says when you heal a target. Because then when you heal someone, when you play a, a defense card, it'll normally heal everyone because you do an AoE defense card. So you'll heal everyone, and that'll trigger a second heal everyone. So you'll heal everyone twice 
for a single card. Uh, this can trigger oh so well with certain items that we'll talk about later. Right, to the deck. So Otis's starting deck. Uh, we There's the heal spells. We got rid of those right away. Uh, Sacred Bolts and Sunbeams. Fun cards, but not on our game plan. We're here to keep people alive and heal them up. Uh, we will keep these barriers and these infused courages. So the infused courage, you, you may notice a trend with upgrades. If there is an option for a energy reduction, usually that's the best way to go. And that is no different here. We bring it down to zero cost. It vanishes, but that's actually a good thing. And uh, it does a little more healing and a little more... Uh, remember, this, this shield icon basically says heal from now on for Otis. So this is a heal card. Heal 7 and apply some Courage. Uh, we're going to actually craft 4 of them because that way we can put Courage on our entire team at level 1. Also, there are 0 cost heal that vanish. It's a very str fairly strong heal because even though it's it's not a full heal 16, but it's it's one of the better cards we can have. So, 4 copies, yes please. Uh, let's see. We're going to keep Atonement for now. Uh... I don't recommend keeping it very long. The reason I'm just keeping it around now is because of the zero cost vanish. You have you can easily replace it early on with some of these other filler cards, being clarity and detoxify. Um, and these are kind of just a pick your poison. Uh, do you need more dispels? Do you feel more comfortable having detoxes available, uh, or do you like just the card? Uh, since clarities are card neutral, being able to pass a card to your your DPS. Uh, if you don't need, like, once you get more efficient in your, your deck building and your fights, sometimes you'll kind of skip out on healing. And this is a good way to skip out on healing by saying, you know what, I don't need this card. Here, have an extra card, say, Reginald or whoever my DPS is. We're also going to pick up Fanaticism. You don't need it as much in Act 1, so you could skip this till Act 2 if you really want. But eventually, especially in the late game, we're going to need as much energy as possible because we're going to play a lot of heavy, heavy-costed cards. Uh, but fanaticism is just a safe way to uh, to gain more energy. And a really cool play pattern with Otis and fanaticism is if you play something like an AoE shield that has a little bit of this block on it, even though we don't have any block charges, like we're not gonna we're not gonna be playing a lot of block on ourselves, but it's a little bit. And so if we play that first and then fanaticism, that damage we deal to ourselves is going to be blocked. And since Otis goes fairly slow, that block wouldn't have been used elsewhere anyway. So it's kind of a nice little small play pattern issue. If you're like, man, this fanaticism is going to hurt. Just remember, if you put some of this block cards up first, then suddenly that fanaticism is not going to hurt you near as much. Also, infused courage will reduce the damage that fanaticism does to you. Because this is shadow damage and courage uh, increases your shadow resistance. So you have several ways to mitigate the damage just naturally in your kit. So it's just a great card for energy efficiency. Uh, next, we're going to keep the barriers. You can keep them as is or upgrade them to blue. The yellow version is not very good for the Otis. Just because of our perks and the way Decadence works. And, like, if you're not running Decadence, the, the heal version should be okay. But for anyone wearing the using that Corruptor, this this basically becomes heal 1 or heal 0. It's, it's really bad ratio rate for us. And it's better to just sometimes use the block especially since this reduces the shield amount on the on the card like it doesn't reduce it on this but compared to the blue we'd rather just have more shield because shield is the name of the game when it comes to otis dispel magic is always a good pickup you can switch between either version i prefer the dispel three but the plus one buffer is pretty fine especially once you get the buffer perk which you should get be getting on otis and then prayer protection, if I could craft two of these, I would. Uh, anything that says, what, shield all heroes, that is the kind of stuff we're looking for. I say everything, not not the save for later. We, we don't, don't, that card don't exist. That's protect from evil. We'll show it later game, but this is the kind of stuff we want. We want effect our entire team. We want shielding on the entire team. Turn us into a big AOE healer. And uh, it's it's very nice, very nice. So prayer protection is everything we want to do. This will stick with us the entire game. And then shield rewarding. This is another one where I was talking about that uh, that decadence and decay issue. Uh, 
Vitality, they reduce it to only one charge here. So with perks, it's only two, which is 10 healing. But if you notice the difference between the blue and the yellow is that there's a 10 difference on the shield amount. So with Decadence on, the the healing from the yellow is not not it's 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 a little less than the blue if you're getting any value out of the shield on the next turn because remember shield heals you on this turn and blocks for you next turn so all shield values are are subject to a to a percentage increase if you know what i mean like so if you're getting any use out of the shield the blue version is better until you have more vitality charges and that's the key eventually we're going to upgrade this to the yellow version because we'll get more vitality charges outside of just of our perks. Uh, Cards-wise, we talk about everything. Filler cards, energy, our efficient heals. Uh, yep, yep, yep. That's everything for that. So let's talk about perks. Perks, 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 perks. Per -per -per perks. Okay, so our main tree here, as we call it, is the shield. You want to get as much shield as possible. Then you're also going to pick up bonus inspire because more cards is best cards. With our healing kit, we sometimes... I, I'm not going to recommend it in the build, but you may consider doing regen just because there's a guaranteed item from the Hydra that will uh, use regen. Other than that, outside of items, we're not going to build any cards that do regen, so you don't really need to pick up this perk. It only costs one, so maybe consider picking it up. But we will do a lot of cards that have both Vitality and Bless. So those are the two we want to pick up for sure. Uh, if you're feeling feisty, you can pick up the bonus holy resist or the bonus mind resist. Uh, I find those a little less effective compared to the the bonus shadow resist. But since we're not doing regen, that's not really an option. So pick those up if you have extra perks and you want to and you feel like you need a little more protection from those two. Uh, the math doesn't really quite check out because by the time we're going to get lots of bless and lots of vitality charges on our team, they're going to be so protected that they don't need the extra resistances, especially since we are a block healer. Like, the shield creates block, and block is not affected by resistances. So increasing the resistances just doesn't get us much mileage from it. But it is worth mentioning. Uh, you have plenty of free perks, so you can pick up some team perks. Like, say, resist like any of these resistances or the vulnerable ones. Uh, and then, as much speed as you can get, as long as you're fitting in the turn order the way you want, as much energy as you can get, and you want this buffer charge, uh, this is good for the dispel magic if you flip it to buffer, or later on in the game we're going to get a card that applies a lot of buffer, and more charges is good stuff. That's everything for the Otis. For the perks. Uh, next on the list is Act 2 Decklist. If you have questions, please let me know. I am happy to answer. Act 2. Otis. I can click on these cards correctly. So what has changed? We've brought in a boon. We've brought in our talent card. Whoops. Um, there's a talent card. Pardon me. Uh, I've now flipped these to yellow because I picked up the item that says plus vitality charges uh without an item that adds charges it it's not it, blue will s sometimes get you more mileage than yellow uh but once you have charges yellow starts to kind of come out on top you will eventually replace these so upgrading them is not a requirement or is not a uh, a priority but uh while you have them make sure you utilize them the best you can uh Everything feels pretty much the same. I've up upgraded the Fanaticism because we're going to start adding these expensive cards. And one of them is Divine Power. As a healer, you want to make sure you always consider Bless as an option. Uh, eventually, we'll get a good AoE Bless card. Uh, but until we can afford that, because that's kind of an Act 3, Act 4 card, uh, Divine Power is always an option. This is really dependent on if your team needs it. Uh, it's it's very I would say it's very narrow but it comes up often enough that I'm definitely going to mention it because most of the time when I run Otis I'll probably run Divine Power for a while I'll eventually cut it Act 3 or 4 but in the meantime between Act 2 and 3 when I don't really have much else to add to my deck 
this is a good pickup, uh, especially if I can get it from a card reward or something. Uh, wow, there's actually not much to talk about. Here. I guess we'll 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 talk about some of the the heavier hitter cards in Act Four because usually it takes there there are a lot of pinks and uh, higher rarities, so we won't guarantee having them until super late game. Uh, let's talk about items. So with Otis, Vitality is a big deal. Holy Grail, fantastic card. Uh, we apply, we will be getting Vitality charges, we'll be getting Blessed charges, and the Heal 4 doesn't help us, but the other two combined will do good things for us. Otherwise, anything that says plus Vitality charges, uh, mostly that's in the earrings here, Life Essence being one of the best ones here. Uh, Heart of Thorns is worth mentioning because uh, in the super late game, we'll be applying hopefully max vitality charges. And so Heart of Thorns is a, a unique way to get increased damage to your team. Because even if you're applying beyond the maximum amount of vitality, I'm pretty sure this still uh, triggers the adding the thorns to it. But the other thing to mention is heal when heal, right? When heal. So with Otis's passive, every time we apply shield, we heal the target. With the cards we select, a lot of them are going to be heal everyone or heal everyone on the team. And then once you hit level five, you're healing them twice every time you cast a play a card. So Winged Wand doesn't affect from the level five, but it does affect from when we shield someone, we speed them up. But the most important one here is Golden Bell. Uh, once we start healing people twice per card this becomes a big deal. Yes, you have to act, you actually have to heal. Like if, you, if they're at max hit points and you heal them, nothing happens. But what happens with Otis is when you apply um, Vitality, if you have Decadence enabled, since Vitality doesn't heal you for the full five hit points that you gain max, what happens is then the next time you play a defense card on that person, they're not gonna have max health. And so you can trigger the Golden Bell much more consistently. So that works really well with Otis's level 5. Because your first card, you'll play it out. You'll add some vitality to the team. They'll now no longer have max hit points. Like their hit points will not be full. And then it'll trigger again. Heal them again. Which will then trigger this, the bell. Or the wand. Or, or stuff like that. So these are usually harder to play. Because your team's going to be at max hit points a lot. But since a lot of the cards we're going to be playing with Otis are Vitality, including his talent card, if you recall, this talent card right here says whenever you apply shield, add Vitality. So you're constantly increasing the max hit points of your team, but with Decadence enabled, they're not getting fully healed. So you have this, now you've created this amount that you can successfully heal and trigger the item. Sorry, I got a little long-winded there, but it was kind of hard. To, I, I, I wish I... I'd made a, a video of it now that I think about it to explain it, but hopefully you get the point that you can trigger Golden Bell much more consistently if you're applying Vitality. Uh, yeah, so and same thing, the Minotaur Horn is when you heal a hero. Um, same kind of reason. And yeah, I think that's about it, because for Otis, we want Vitality Charges, we want Golden Bell, and yeah, that's, that's honestly all the Otis things. There's also a couple... Good ones that say defense. How do, I don't remember how they spell defense here. Noble Shield's pretty nice because you're going to be playing a lot of defense cards. Uh, you also often be the one to pick up Shield of Thorns. The Thorns doesn't matter as much, but hey, it triggers. So just because it's a guaranteed drop off of the tree. Uh, you also are one of the few people that can benefit really well from the Mountain King because... Um, you will be playing lots of defense cards, and you will be playing lots of expensive defense cards. So this plays into your game plan very well. This I would probably pick up over the Vitality Rings, if given the option. Uh, let's move on to Act 4. So with Act 4, this is when Otis really gets to shine. This is when a lot of the, the powerful cards come in together. So I said defense... All heroes. So we would consider Anthem of Hope, except for the fact that we already are applying Courage to our team very well. This is this is an available pickup 
just because it has the inspire so if your team needs more inspire otis this only costs one so it's it's a fairly valuable pickup i normally just don't because i the courage is wasted most of the time for me but otherwise protect from evil you can see i have two of them and i didn't craft one it's because every time it came up i picked it and then i upgraded it because this is a fantastic card uh aoe shielding which is aoe healing healing in our case and it applies buffer to the entire team this is great for avoiding uh nasty nasty effects from the enemies and if you would really like to what you can do is you can pair it with double bubble to kind of spread this out so since the all heroes version of this vanishes you can only ever do it once unless of course you copy it so what you do is you play double bubble you play protect from evil and then you hold on to the copy that you were made and you let it shuffle through your deck again because it'll stay zero cost it'll still have vanish but it'll go through your deck and then you can draw it again later and use it again on a future turn and what that does is since buffer doesn't stack you can kind of spread out the uses of your buffer and uh, duplicate it and since you don't always need that effect that's the great part about double bubble is because if it's a fight where i want to avoid all these status effects i can duplicate double bubble i mean sorry uh protect from evil but if i don't need to duplicate protect from evil i can duplicate something like sanctuary and here's where i'm talking about vitality and bless and stuff uh sanctuary is the otis card um you will want uh, anywhere from uh one to four copies of this i I might even run five, depending on my items. You're only going to want one version to not vanish. The other versions, you're going to want the vanishing versions because you're not going to be able to cast more than one a turn unless you have items that allow it. So if you have ways to cast more than one of these, by all means, do it. But most of the time, you only cast one a turn other than in the initial turns where you're doing stuff like double bubble or you have a lot of meditates going on. Uh, meditate is the auto pickup for healers. So the more of these, the better. And you're going to want to aim for the blue version. I just could not afford it in this setup because I was upgrading my sanctuary. I bought a sanctuary and I upgraded a sanctuary. Uh, Pandemonium here is on the list just to remind you that you can play some situational cards. Pandemonium and Divine Power are kind of narrow effects. These are, hey, if you're doing good enough on healing, don't forget that you can do other things outside of healing like buffing your, your, your damage of your team by either applying uh i wouldn't recommend pandemonium outside the purple version uh or there's a couple other cards that are like that that have like aoe shackle aoe vulnerable like any of these effects consider them if the price range is manageable and i would say four or less is manageable for otis most of the time uh and you'll just decide whether you're going to play your sanctuary or your pandemonium uh, you know whether you need to catch up on healing or whatnot or you can get ahead on damage uh, but the these two are definitely not required and are very uh, specific. Uh, one prayer protection, two is fine. Usually what I end up doing for my final cards for the Archon, though, is I'll have one Sanctuary, one prayer protection, one Dispel Magic, one Fanaticism, and then just one other filler defense card, uh, in which case it's Barrier because it's going to cost zero and it doesn't vanish. So that's our, our final five for the Archon fight. Everything else you're going to want to vanish down to to those numbers so you can consistently be casting sanctuary every turn because you want to be able to hit this fanaticism every turn so that you can have enough energy to play sanctuary because you can't maintain four energy a turn without artificial means uh, that should be all the things did i miss anything so the the two cards that are really make out of shine are protect from evil and sanctuary and double bubble allows you to copy that and then of course your talent is just super duper healing uh you will hit the the max 200 shield charges on your players your characters all the time uh otis is a shielding machine i guess the only other item this is going to be a little out of place here is there are a couple items that are worth mentioning to say shield um like hypno shields not so bad and there's one other oh yeah these amulets i really like the seashell amulets and there's also the dream catcher I, I can't believe i forgot these in the item section um plus shielding charges equals for us plus healing so these were actually intended with otis in mind because you can see they've got buffer charges they've got shield charges those are the things that we do i i think that covers everything for otis let's see if i'm missing anything 
Uh, team counts. Let's go to team counts. And unlocks. So, Otis, you unlock in the starting town. I'm not starting town, the starting map. Um, all you do is you go to the church, you meet him, you say, okay, I can kill Yager for you, and then you just walk to the top of the map and kill Yager. Ta-da! You got Otis. Um, Otis fits into every team very well. Uh, I would say the only thing, to, like, the only consideration is that Otis is a little slow, uh, but, I mean, all healers are, and that um, Otis will likely be applying Bless and Vitality at some point. Uh, so if you want to use Eliza Bless, great. But even if all you're doing with the Bless is just helping the healing to your team happen, like, because Bless increases the healing the target receives, so Otis is basically just healing more successfully with his uh the the passive here the uh shielder so honestly otis doesn't have any inherent synergies with anyone uh i guess with heiner heiner or if you're doing a a warrior that wants to do like shield bashes and shield slams since otis is a shielding healer you will find that you end up with a lot more block on your character i would say that's the the closest thing to a synergy Otis has. Otherwise, Otis is always a respectable and solid healer that you will not regret running. Um, that should be everything for today. Uh, if you like what you see, please let me know. Comments of, like, feedback. I don't... It's not so much for the algorithm. It's so much more for, like, hey, I know what you like. I know what I should do next. Please let me know. I will catch you later. Peace.